before we can implement multiple destinations in our game, we will be covering a programming concept that is very important, and that is the concept of arrays. An array is a data structure that allows you to store multiple values of a certain data type in an ordered way. So each value has an order inside of the array. So see, look at this array here. What we say at the beginning is, so we, we do at the beginning set the data type of the elements that will be stored in our array. In this case, this will be strings. We use the square brackets like so to indicate that this will be an array. And then this is a way to instantiate our array and set uh, values for the array uh, right away. So we're setting four elements in this array. And an important concept when it comes to arrays is that of index indices. So each element in your array has a corresponding index and the and counting starts from zero. The first ele element of your array is element zero and it goes all the way to the length of the array minus one. So for example, this array has four elements. So this will be index zero, one, two, and three. So the last element is always positioned at the length of the array minus one. So in this example here, we're again declaring and instantiating an array. And in the next line of code, we are accessing one of the elements of this array. We are creating a new variable of type string, calling it fav, fav animal, like favorite animal. And we can access any element from our array by using the square brackets and indicating the index, the position of our element. Another important concept is that of uh, modification of array elements, how you can modify an array element. And that occurs in the same way than with variables. You simply assign the value. So you refer uh, to the element that you want, in this case, the one that is in position two. So we start with zero, one, two, the dog, and we change the value of that position of that element to whale. So the new the new array will be turtle, bird, whale, cat. Now, some more uh, important things about arrays. You can actually declare an array without, speci without specifying the size of the L or the elements right away. So you can just declare, and then you need to instantiate it, and that is when you um, specify the value, the number of elements that it will have. Um, in this example here, we are actually instantiating the array, but without setting the actual values. All we're saying is, we are going to create an array of game objects called players. And we are just saying that there will be 10 elements, but we're not setting them yet. You can do it later. An easy way to get the length of the array is simply to access the dot, uh, access the name of the array dot length, to access the length property, and that will give you the length of the array. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Once you instantiate an array, the length of this array cannot be changed later. Also, um, so if, you, if for some reason you needed an array that has a, a variable length, you will be adding and removing elements. Uh, you shouldn't be using arrays. You should be using a C, a C sharp class called list that will allow you to do that. All the arrays that we've uh, shown so far are what's called static array. For example, these all have their values hard coded. They, the values are in the code and the numbers are in the code as well. They are explicitly set. But you can also have dynamic arrays where the number of elements and also the values of the elements themselves can come from methods or from other classes. And that means that the user could be entering a number of elements and then you create the array for that number of elements. But just like I said before, once the array has been instantiated, you can no longer change the number of elements of that array. You can change the values themselves, but you can't change the number of elements. Okay, how are we going to implement this into Unity and how exactly is this going to work? Let me do a little sketch. Basically, we are going to have an initial position and that is where our platform is going to start. And then we are going to have more positions and all of these positions will be game objects in an array. So we're going to have a, a game object array that is going to be called destinations or targets or something like that. And the way it's going to work is that uh, you're going to start in the initial position and then when you press the fire button, the platform is going to move all the way to the next destination and it's going to stop at that point. Then if you press the button again, you can go to the next point, you can look around, check out the mountains or the lake, 
and when you're ready you press the button go to the next one and when you are on the very last one you um, we're going to go back to the original one and there you go so it's a bit of a circuit and we are going to be using arrays in this way so let's uh, move on to unity and open our our code in visual studio our platform controller we are going to create our array of destinations so it's going to be destinations or targets and it can be an array of game objects called targets or destinations and before we were using a transform for our targets I, I think actually a transform is a better alternative than game object because we're only going to be using the location of those of those elements but it doesn't really matter it doesn't really make any difference let's let's just keep it transform similar to what we were doing before and we can also delete this but if I delete it I'm gonna have a series of errors in unity because we are using that target here so I will just leave that now so that I can show you how what happens when I create a public array what happens in the editor so I've created this public array and it's called targets let's now go to the uh, unity editor and I can show you what will appear so let me select my player and if we go here now we have these targets and the first thing that we can enter is the size of our array this will allow the array to be instantiated with a certain length of course so what if I just set a length of say 4 what happens then I get my four elements here that I can drag in I can drag elements in here we had our first target in this position and I'm going to start by dragging that target in here so that is our first position then um, I'm, what I'm going to do is duplicate by pressing Ctrl D and placing the other one let's say somewhere here up in this mountain then I want to have another one that it's it's more let's, let's have the top view it is more somewhere here and then another one that is more in this part and then another one that is just a bit further so I think we have a bit of a cir uh, circuit here uh, what I'm going to do is put them all into one single game object so I'm going to call this targets and I'm drag I'm going to drag them all into here and now let's let's add them to our player we actually have five targets to add not four so I'm going to change the size to five and there we go so we have our first our first target is there then the second one um, needs to be dragged into this position and I'm gonna be doing the same with all of them so that they're all uh, so that we can access them all from our code um, the very first I want to do is that when the game starts I want my platform to begin in target one that is the initial position of the platform so in our start method in our code in our start method we are going to set that as the initial position so if we go to start we're going to set the uh, player to the first target this means that transform.position equals the first target and if you recall from our arrays diagrams uh, the position at the beginning is position zero so um, we are going to type in here trans um, targets position zero dot position so now if we play our game you can see that even though the, the player is positioned in this part and that is where position zero is when when the game starts we begin in that position that is going to be our first position that's going to be the beginning of the circuit circuit all right so let's continue and make this travel across the different points we can now get rid of this target here and we want to keep track of which our next destination is so when you start the game your next destination if we start in zero the next destination should be one because that is the, pl the first uh, place that we're going to be moving towards we're going to create a private variable for that which is going to be called next destination index it's going to be an integer next index and since we are starting in zero then the initially the next destination 
is um, should be one. And let's let's do it like that. So index. And if you if you want, instead of having hard code the numbers like this, you could also have that as a parameter, and then you could just say that you could have a variable called initial index, and this would be initial index. You can set it to zero or any other number, and then you can also uh, just make, say the next index is going to be that number plus one. And you'll have to check if you are at the end of the array, you have to then set it to zero. Okay, but this will do. So our next index is where we are moving towards. And inside of handle movement, we saw that if we are not moving, we obviously don't call this. But if we are moving, we check that we haven't arrived yet. But what if we have arrived? That is an else here. If we have arrived, we should update the next index. So else, and that means if we have arrived, else our next index will be increased by one. And also we want to set the fact uh, the is moving to false so that we're not we stop moving. So let's go to Unity and see if this works. Okay, so we have an error here and it says here, the name target does not exist in the current context. And that makes sense. Um, so what we can do here is replace this by targets in position, um, in the position, next index. So targets in position, next index, because that is where, that is the direction that we're moving towards. So we replace that in those both in both places. And now save and go back to Unity and press play. So we can see that we start here and if we click, we are moving to the second location. And I can go and actually I want to increase the, the speed to, just to make it really fast so we can easily see how this is working. So what if I click again? Then we go to the next target. And if we go again, we go to the next target. And if we go again, we go to the next target, but you will see what happens now. We get an error and it says here, array index is out of range. And that is what you will be solving in the next challenge. So challenge time. Each time that we reach a destination, so when we arrive to a destination, check that we Check that we, if we have a right to the end of our array. And if that is the case, as you saw, we're going to get an error. So in that, in that case, next index should, or the index of the target should go back to zero. It shouldn't keep on increasing. So that is going to be your challenge is to make this work so that we can actually go and start over our circuit. All right. So you had a try and hopefully solved the challenge. And what I'm going to do now is just show you the steps on how this could be solved. And with all of these challenges, uh, sometimes you might have to do a little bit of research to solve them. And also there's not always a single way of solving a problem. There are multiple ways of implementing all of the things that I'm doing. So if you did it in a different way, that is fine. Okay. So when we increase our index, we want to make sure that we are still in the array and an easy way to do that is to use this length array length property that I showed you before. So we can check and if the next index has actually um, arrived to that, to the length of the array, if we have arrived to that point, it means that that, that object no longer exists because array objects, I'm going to write it here, array elements, um, the index, array element index starts at zero for the first position and goes all the way to the length minus one. For example, if the array has three elements, it will go from zero to two, which means that if you increase it and we breach the length of the array, that means that we should be, uh, we're outside of the array. There's, there's not gonna be an element in there by definition. So next index in that case should be set to zero. And if we go to our game and we have another play, um, let me set the speed to something really fast so that we can quickly check if this works. We go there, 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 and we're back. So we are able to do this whole round trip. There you go. We've got this working and now it's time to move on to the next lesson.